Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Danny Christine. I am a childcare business owner, consultant, and a digital content creator on childcaresites.com where you can find things like private video consultations, free webinars, and a plethora of other resources to support you in succeeding in your childcare business. If you're not already, please be sure to scroll down and click that subscribe button to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And while you're down there, of course, you need to click that notification bell so that you can be notified every single time I post a new video here on this channel. Last week, I posted a video explaining how you could take action and actually begin to get started on developing your childcare business. And I even gave you free access to a fillable PDF worksheet that you could have downloaded and gotten right to work on creating your childcare business plan. And I was pleasantly surprised at how many of you actually access that worksheet and got right to work. Since you guys liked that video and loved the worksheet even more, I had to create another one for you, which you can find linked in the description. And I wanted to continue on with the childcare business startup tips. In today's video, I want to talk to you about what you should be doing during your licensing process. And you might be thinking like, licensing isn't that the state's job or isn't that the city's job they're the ones that have to license me so it's their job to go through the licensing process but nope you are mistaken you actually have a lot of work to do so let's get into it so first and foremost most states have an orientation process that you are required to go through before you can even access the licensing application and I actually want to take a minute to say that if you did not watch last week's video that explained the steps that you should take to start your childcare business, you should watch that one first because one of the things that I mentioned was how important it is for you to know your regulations in your local area as well as your licensing process. And if you did that research first, including watching that video, you would know whether or not an orientation was mandatory before accessing your application. Even if your orientation process is not mandatory, if your state offers one, I would certainly highly recommend that you take it. Some are online, some are in person, some are a combination of both. Either way, look into your orientation requirements and get yourself on the schedule for one if need be. It's also important to note that sometimes you'll get a certificate for the orientation and that certificate might need to be handed in with your application and that certificate might only be valid for a certain period of time. So for example, you might not be able to have gone through the orientation process three years ago and then now decide, hmm, I'm going to go apply for my license. They might require you to take the orientation process again. So find out that rule in your area and then move forward accordingly. The next thing that you're going to want to do is go get the application or have it mailed to you. There are some states or some areas that might automatically mail you the application after you complete the orientation process. I know for me in New York, we had to go through an online orientation uh, and then after completing the online orientation in the state's orientation portal, they then asked you for your address to send the application. So it might be something like that, or you might have to go to your licensing agency and pick it up. Either way, go get it. <laughs> if your state is one of those that you have to wait for it to come in the mail, and if it does take a, a while, you might start to get antsy. Uh, some states have sample applications that are posted online, and those would be great for you to start using if it's available for you. So you can check if a sample application is available for you on your licensing website so that you can start working on it while you wait for your actual application to come. Or let's say, you're not quite ready 
to actually move forward with orientation and you know alerting the state that you would like to apply for a license let's say you just want to take a peek at the application I don't blame you for doing that see if you have a sample application available in your local area even if you do get started or finish the application on the sample version you may have to change a few things the sample could be outdated or most states will say they reserve the right to change anything or ask other questions you don't want to copy word for word what you put on the sample to now the final copy without double checking if it's even the same question so just use your common sense and triple check everything before you sign off and finalize that your application is complete. Next, you're going to need to create your health and safety plans. These plans might be labeled a little differently depending on what state or city or county you're in, but regardless, you're gonna need them. For instance, in New York, childcare centers are required to have a health care plan that outlines the procedures and policies that are in place to protect the health and well-being of all the children in care. Usually, it includes like the criteria for exclusion if a child becomes too sick to be in your care or arrives to your program too sick to be in your care. It'll outline what those too sick descriptions are or it might even include like certain staff qualifications like who has valid certifications in what area and so much more my healthcare plan i think is like 30 pages um and some states might require more or less to be in your plan so look into that and start working on it the safety plan might be called something like the emergency plan and it usually outlines the floor plan of your property whether it's your home for a family daycare program or your building if it's a center. Um, it will usually outline the evacuation procedures in case of an emergency that requires evacuation like fires or anything else that you would need to leave the building for um, maybe even shelter in place plans where if there's a hazardous situation going on outside and you need to shelter inside that should be included in your emergency plan and might be required to be in there depending on what your application is asking for so protocols like that might be asked of you some states might provide you with like a standard list of mandatory procedures that you must take in the event of one of these types of emergencies and some states might require that you develop some of these policies or explain how you will protect the children on your own so it's important to start thinking about that taking a look at your space and coming up with those what if scenarios and oftentimes the worst case scenarios that we don't like to think about what will you do to protect your children under different circumstances these are things to think about during your licensing process I am going to be giving you guys another free worksheet along with this video so definitely scroll down and check that description box for the link to access this worksheet so you can begin to outline your procedures. I also suggest that you find out exactly who you're going to be needing inspections from very early on in your licensing process. Do not make the mistake of thinking that only your licensing agency needs to come out and inspect once you have everything set up. No, <laughs> they're usually the last person that comes. Usually, it could be different depending on where you are, but usually the licensor or the licensing agency inspector is usually the last person that shows up once the rest of the inspections are complete it could be as simple as just one inspection for some of you but for others it could be that you need a fire safety inspection sprinkler inspections an inspection of your hvac system fire extinguisher inspections if you have fire extinguishers sprinkler inspections possibly even an extermination report 
For those of you that don't know, I started out in the childcare business with a home daycare program first. And I was shocked to see the firemen pull up in their actual fire truck. I think like three or four firemen came into my house and walked all through it just to give me the okay before I could move on with the licensing process. It was a lot. <laughs> you really want to take the time to find out exactly what inspections are going to be required of you in your area and who you need to go to for those inspections because it could take you a couple of weeks just to even get on those people's schedule and I, I don't want to alarm you that's just the truth in most places so again in the worksheet that you can find in the description below uh, I definitely help you to outline that and get yourself on your own personal schedule of when to reach out to those people and who to contact next something that is usually overlooked during the licensing process is marketing I don't believe that you should wait until your licensing process is completely over to start marketing. And you might be wondering like, why? What am, what am I advertising if I'm not open? I can't accept any kids, why advertise? But that this, this isn't new. Think about all the coming soon signs that you've seen on storefronts or on websites or on billboards for all these different businesses in different industries or even in the malls. Listen, the licensing process could take you a few months if you're lucky and building enrollment could take you a few months if you're lucky and upwards of a year or more depending on how big your program actually is. Why would you want to delay that process of spreading the word about your new and upcoming business? Don't delay that process by waiting to advertise. Take it from me. I made that mistake. While you wait on your license, put up that sign that says coming soon and has your contact information or your website address. Put out those social media advertisements targeting families in your geographical area. Build a wait list of families keep their contact information, phone numbers, email addresses, use the drip marketing campaign method that I talked about in one of my recent videos. Drip marketing has been such an effective way of getting leads to pay attention to the things that I want them to pay attention to and to even take action on certain things like calling my center or registering online. If done correctly, you could even attract more leads. Over the past month, I've enrolled a dozen new children into my program, and here's how it is. And I will link that in the description for you to check out as well. Use that method to keep in contact with those families so they don't lose interest about you and your program. I am going to be hosting a live workshop on simple marketing strategies that you could use in your childcare business. If you're interested in that, then definitely check the description for information on how you can register. I keep saying check the description. There's so much good stuff in there, so please check it out. Now, last but certainly not least, trainings. You're most likely going to need some trainings. I do keep saying this because it is so important to note, but the requirements might be different from state to state. I know that there are some content creators or some childcare business related videos on here that tell you what you must do, what trainings you must take, what things you must post up, when in reality that's most likely only relevant for their local area. And it is so important for you to be knowledgeable about what you need to do and what trainings you need to take and what licensing process you need to go through in your local area. I can certainly help you figure out what your specific requirements are if you book a private video consultation with me and you can do that by going to childcaresites.com slash Danny Christine. That will also be linked in the description below along with everything else. <laughs> But yes, definitely look into your required trainings because this is important. Some of mine, both to start up my home daycare program and to start up my center, were 
uh, CPR, first aid, pediatric of course for both, and uh, health and safety. The health and safety trainings were different for the home daycare modality versus the center-based. Uh, so there are slight differences, but those were the three required trainings that I had to submit certificates for in addition to my child care licensing application. So I could not be licensed, my program could not be licensed without those certificates. That is all for this video, you guys. When it comes to the child care business startup process, there is so much to cover from start to finish, from just thinking about, should I start a daycare? Why do I want to start one? Which is kind of what we covered in the last video, uh, to going through the licensing process, which we talked about just now, um, and then so much more beyond that. So if you're interested in what goes on beyond licensing, then definitely click the like button on this video so I know I should continue on with this series. Click the link below to access the worksheet that I made available for you guys and leave a comment. Let me know what you appreciated about this video, what you want to learn in future videos, and let me know once you're registered for my live workshop. That's something I'm excited about. After you're done clicking all those links, hitting the subscribe, hitting the like, commenting, all that, head on over to childcaresites.com and enter your email address to subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.